Good Yantiv, good Yantiv. Today is Chai Elul. It's a day that gives us life. Yud Ches, which is Chai, it puts an entire life into the month of Elul. And this final 12 days of the year, Chassidus teaches us each day corresponds to a month from the previous year. We have the opportunity between now and Rosh Hashanah to reflect and do tshuva, repent for anything that may have happened. Yom L'Chedesh, you know, Yom L'Chedesh, each one of these days um, cor- cor- you know, correlating with a month from the previous year. Why is Chai Elul such a unique day to give life in Elul? So I'm going to quote to you from today's Ayyem Yom. In the 1940s, the Rebbe wrote a small booklet with anecdotes and stories and inspirational teachings that mostly from his father-in-law. Um, and he put it in a, in a daily booklet called Ayyem Yom, today's day. And today on Chai Elul, it says as follows, that today Chai Elul is a unique anniversary for quite a few things. First of all, it's the birthday of the Shnei Ma'oyres HaGdoylem, the two great luminaries. Today in the year 1698, the Baal Shem Tev, the founder of the Hasidic movement, was born. Today in the year 1745, in Tav Kuf the Alter Rebbe, the founder of the Chabad, Hasidic, was born, Chabad Hasidism, was born. So two great luminaries that transformed and revolutionized traditional Jewish life with the teachings of Hasidus and the unique perspective of Hasidus. They were both born on today's day. It's also the day in which the Baal Shem Tev's teacher, Achia Shiloini, revealed himself to him for the first time in 1724. And the day in which the Baal Shem Tev revealed himself to the world as not just a hidden mystic, but a revealed teacher of Judaism, of Chassidus, in the year 1734. About 132 years after the Baal Shem Tev passed away, the Rebbe Rashab, the fifth Chabad Rebbe of Shalom Dov Ber, had a revelation. It was, it, was, it was right in the beginning of Shabbos. It was right after Kabbalat Shabbat, right after Kabbalah Shabbos. Parshas Kisavoy, in the year 1892, he had a vision of a teaching that the Baal Shem Tev taught, and this is quoted in this Hayyam Yayim book, and I think it really epitomizes what this day is all about. V'hoya kisove la'aretz, which is the words of last week's parsha, kisove, you will come to the land. But the word aretz also comes from the same root word as merutza and ratzin, which means running, merutza, and ratzin, which is will. And what he said is as follows, an incredible teaching. V'hoya kisove la'aretz, that when you're going to come to a state of running towards the will of God, you're going to be seeking and yearning to connect with God and get to the ultimate will of what Hashem wants from you. You're going to be looking to figure out, what am I doing in this world? What's the meaning of life? And you start going on that journey, you have to remember, you have to have you have to have stability, you have to have be settled in a proper way, meaning whatever ideas, whatever lofty ideas you come up with, you have to make it practical in your life, and the Samta Batana, put it in the basket. In other words, internalize it. And what is the lesson that you're going to internalize when you're trying to become close to Hashem? You will go to the place that God chose. That a Jew needs to know that whenever you go from one place to another, the only reason you're going, you may have other reasons for why you think you're going, but the reason you're going is to spread godliness in the place that you're going to. In other words, if you want to look at the Baal Shem Tev and the Alter Rebbe, what is Yiddishkeit really all about? If you're looking to internalize Judaism in your life, you have to see every step, every moment, every movement you make in your life. Even when moments seem like, oh, man, it's not going exactly as I planned, those moments, those steps are, or, are ordained by God for you to spread godliness in that area. And then later, after Mayrev, so this was after Kabbalat Shabbat, after Mayrev, he repeated the previous teaching that he added. In order to get to the will of God, in order to find a stable anchor in knowing how to live a meaningful life in accordance with Hashem, you have to go to a place to spread godliness, which means not just that wherever you end up, you should spread godliness, but you should have self-sacrifice, selflessness to spread godliness wherever you are. And how do you spread godliness? This is so key with making a bracha or saying a verse, a pasuk in Tehillim. Sometimes we think that in order to revolutionize the world with chassidus or to revolutionize the world with godliness, you have to do something revolutionary. You have to get on billboards and, and get people to put on film. And it's true. That's all part of it. But sometimes it's something as simple and transformative as making a bracha on a rainbow, a bracha on lightning or thunder, a bracha on a sandwich, or saying well, you're being in a place, you stop at a gas station, you're pumping gas, say a capital tillum, say a psalm. You never know if anyone ever said a psalm. That's Chayel. The luminaries, the Baal Shem Tev and the Alter Rebbe, sure, they taught us how to dig deep 
into the reservoirs and the esoteric aspects of the Torah, but how does it translate itself? It translates itself practically in how we live our lives to be a walking embodiment of godliness and spreading that godly warmth wherever we are in the most simplistic acts that God asks us to do because that's really what it boils down to. So let us be inspired on this Chayel, this final 12 days of the year, to take these revolutionary ideas, the Samta Batena, put it in our basket, internalize it, and finally bring Moshiach Tzitkenu. Live from Texas, from Brocha's wedding. We'll see you back here soon. Zagizant.